Hello, gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, Mr. Brunel here. Uh, Brunel on board, ready to get on board with some theology. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Passover, a uh, really important uh, point in uh, salvation history, and uh, which this begins the uh, the true flight of Egypt, uh, the uh, the Israelites leaving uh, Egypt. Uh, for the promised land. So, very exciting stuff. But the do now today, you're going to be able to describe the Passover meal. Uh, please write down the name of the lesson, the Passover, and copy down the uh, objective and the uh, exit ticket. So, uh, before we begin, of course, let's uh, always begin with prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing I do your will. Amen. Say, Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gentlemen, let's make sure we copy down the objective and the exit ticket. Sorry, I don't know why number two showed up there. I'm actually going to change that right now. So the objective today is to be able to articulate the significance of the Passover meal with how it relates to, uh, to the Mass. Uh, it, so there's a really, really cool and deep connection between uh, the two that we're going to explore today. The first question is, of course, describe the Passover meal. Uh, just some details on that, and then you should start your homework, and I'm going to give you uh, the fullest answer uh, pretty soon. So once you're done copying this down into your notebook, uh, let's carry on. A reminder that the unique goal and the essential question of what we will be um, engaging with, uh, is that right? We're being able to articulate the flight of Egypt, and our essential question for the unit is, how does the story of the flight of Egypt affect and model our spiritual life today? So be thinking about those things. All right, guys. Um, describe the Passover meal, Exodus 12, right? So from your reading um, for homework, uh, you should have read about what God asked them to do uh, so that they can be protected from the angel of death uh, who was going to uh, end the life of the firstborn uh, in Egypt. So uh, God gives them particular instructions, right? Uh, what, to, what to eat and how to prepare it, right? They have to be uh, ready to travel. They have all their walking sticks here in this image, right? Ready to travel, uh, eat, eat with haste, right? Uh, equi uh, you know, uh, be ready to, to, to jump at a moment's notice. Uh, so one, uh, so the particular instructions, some of the, the key points of, that I need you to know is that they take a spotless lamb, a spotless lamb, it is roast, roasted, and they ate it with uh, unleavened bread, so bread that does not have yeast in it, because uh, once you introduce yeast to um, bread, right, it starts rising, right, because the the bacteria or whatever uh, eats up some of the I think some of the sugars, and then it like uh, you know causes they release some kind of air or gas or whatever, and so it rises. That's why bread rises. Um, they ate it with unleavened bread, so without even time to to wait for the bread to rise, uh, and bitter herbs. Uh, the blood of the lamb was painted on their doorposts uh, so that the angel of death would pass over them. So they take the blood of the lamb and they paint it on the doorposts uh, in order to signal to the angel of death not to uh, go in and uh, kill the firstborn in that household. Um, so uh, very, uh, very good. The uh, Typically the bitter, uh, nowadays when they do a Passover meal, the bitter, uh, the reason, uh, the explanation they give for the bitter herbs is to remember their bitter you know, the, kind of the bitter time in slavery. Uh, and uh, and I think another thing that they do with the bitter herbs now is that they dip it in uh, salted uh, water to, to remember the, the, the basically the, the salty, sad tears of, uh, of the suffering of Egypt. Uh, so that's what I need to know for uh, describing the key points of the Passover meal from your reading. I'll put the link in the description down below about uh, basically uh, from the you know I love the Prince of Egypt, and so uh, we'll uh, you we'll watch uh, make sure you check out this uh, this video of basically a drama uh, the drama of uh, the death of the firstborn uh, with the angel of death. We'll go ahead and take a chant break. So today, guys, uh, we're going to be reviewing the Our Father. So uh, I'm going to sing it to you. Let's uh, let's do it. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, arveni ad reinum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum 
quotidiano da nobis odie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo. I was missing the little, that last bit. Uh, I'll have to fix that for later. Great. Let's keep moving. So, the Passover meal and the Mass, right? So, looking at both texts uh, here, right? So, we see in Exodus 12, uh, one thing it mentions is the unspottedness, right? So, it must have nothing wrong with it. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and just make sure you're just writing down the bolded. Uh, nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, and then another line, it says, The meal must be eating inside the house. None of the meat is to be taken outside of the house. And an interesting point... Uh, that uh, the Lord makes in the instruction is don't break any of the bones. Interesting, interesting. Don't break any of the bones. So if you think about it, like who has nothing wrong with him? Hmm, who is perfect? And who did not have his bones broken? Interesting, I wonder who. Well, spoiler alert, uh, it's Jesus, guys. So right, he is the perfect, right? He's, the, he's, he's fully God and fully man. Uh, he's the perfect human. Uh, yet he is also God, uh, so he is truly spotless, right? He has no, there is no sin. Uh, Jesus commits no sin in his life, uh, and uh, and remember on the cross, right? To make sure that the uh, that the that they were that they had died already, they actually they were instructed to break the bones, uh, break their legs uh, on the cross to make them basically die quicker, uh, and so they broke the bones of. Uh, of the two other people who were crucified with Jesus, but when, when they got to Jesus, um, the soldiers saw that he, he had already died, um, and instead they uh, they pierced his side with uh, uh, Saint Longinus pierces the side of Jesus, and that's when the water and blood flow um, uh, from uh, from Christ. So, uh, sorry, but it, very clearly his bones were not broken. So again, there's this very deep connection. Between the Old Testament and the New Testament, remember our line from Saint Thomas, uh, not Saint Thomas, Saint Augustine, right? Uh, what is uh, what is hidden in the old is unveiled in the new, uh, and what is uh, what is revealed in the new is uh, hidden in the old. Something like that. I think I, I hope I didn't butcher that. So anyway, there's a deep, deep, deep connection here. Uh, key point. So, so there is this deep connection between uh, this Passover meal and, of course, right how. Uh, you know, Christ is sacrificed for us, and of course, what is the Mass? But the eternal participation in Christ's uh, uh, sacrifice for us. Uh, so it's just like how there is a meal dimension of of the Mass, right? Uh, there is also this sacrifice, uh, that sacrificial dimension. And what does Jesus do, of course, at the Last Supper? Uh, right, he takes... Uh, right, he takes... They're celebrating the Passover meal together. And he takes the bread and the wine and says, this is my body, this is my blood. So he makes this new covenant with them. Um, make sure to watch this video, which uh, describes a bit some of the, some of the connections uh, between uh, the Passover uh, meal and, and, uh, and how we understand uh, the, uh, how we understand Christ. I'll put the link down below. So what I do need you to know is that the Passover meal uh, foreshadows? Uh, Passover meal foreshadows the mass, right? So, it, what does remember what foreshadow means? Right, it's pointing to something in the future, right? The Passover meal foreshadows the mass. We see that Christ is the Lamb of God who has been sacrificed for us, just like how they ate a lamb and they use the blood of that lamb, and it's the blood of the lamb which saves them from the angel of death, which protects them, right? Uh, so, we use unleavened bread. Uh, we use unleavened bread for the body of Christ uh, at uh, at Mass, so the same kind of bread that was used in the Passover, right? And uh, just as the Lamb's blood saves the Israelites, right, um, the the blood of Christ, right, uh, which uh, which uh, which Christ offers to us, and of course that we experience uh, at the Mass, uh, is offered for our salvation. Uh, so some very key connections there. So, um, right, we're always uh, God's always thinking. Way in advance, always perpetually, um, he is existing, uh, experiencing time at, at, at every moment. So uh, there's some beautifully beautiful connections there. This is a little snippet of a famous uh, painting in Ghent, Belgium. Uh, it's a very beautiful image 
of a mystical lamb uh, here who's offering his blood uh, for our salvation. You see some of the instruments of the passion around him, uh, around this lamb. So, but uh, yeah, so there's this really cool connection between this Passover uh, that, that Moses and the Israelites are with haste uh, uh, eating and celebrating uh, as they as they flight as they leave for Egypt and then Christ right is going to take the Passover meal and elevate it and use it as the means uh, to uh, for us to participate in his eternal sacrifice uh, uh, on the cross so it's a very a very beautiful connection so I do need you uh, to know that right the Passover meal foreshadows the mass Christ is the Lamb of God who, sac who sacrificed for you for us we use unleavened bread for the body of Christ and just as the Lamb's blood saves the Israelites, the blood of Christ is offered for our salvation. So, cool connection here. All right, guys. That's all I got for you today. Make sure you do watch uh, the other two videos just to help you with uh, uh, learning the objective. And make sure you take your uh, exit ticket. So, uh, with that, this is Brunel on board. Uh, signing off.